Brandon Citrix, the author of the book um, Designing Web Navigation, and I played bass. Uh, hi, I'm Jeff Gotthelf, and I'm also an interaction designer. I wrote a book called In UX, and sometimes I play piano. And uh, we're very privileged to be on stage with these two gentlemen, Ryan Brennan on guitar and Noel Sagerman on drums. Let's have Ryan applause for their two gentlemen. So um, we wanted to talk today a little bit about jazz improvisation as a way to illustrate better teamwork and better collaboration. Um, so hopefully you can draw some analogies between what we play and what we say for your own teamwork. Um, a lot of people have said um, there are no mistakes in jazz, just missed opportunities. We're not the first people to say that. So um, for instance, if, if Ryan were to play a quote unquote wrong harmony that doesn't fit into the current progression, the only mistake that we can make is by not responding to it. Right? We could reject it or ignore it, but we could also embrace it and use that quote-unquote mistake as a way to pivot into something new. <clears throat> so there are no mistakes in jazz, just missed opportunities. Um, and we wanted to talk a little bit about what are the conditions that are in place to make that possible. And um, we want to talk about five qualities, five attributes of a team, of a group, that we think contribute to that um, condition. First of all, um, I want to start with empathy. Empathy for each other, but empathy also for our roles and our, and our instruments. We're all playing very different instruments. Um, we bring something unique to the table, but it's really when we get together that we we're able to function as a team and create, create the music. Um, jazz musicians talk about having big ears, right? Big, yeah, no, no, not, not, right? Big ears is about listening to others more than you're listening to yourself, right? So there's this notion of radical receptivity in jazz, that you're constantly attuned to the other people, and you have empathy for their role and for their, for their instruments and, and what they're contributing as much as to as what, you're, what, we, what you're contributing. Um, so that was the first tune, these four people, that this group never played together. Right? We, we've never played together. In fact, Jeff just met Ryan and Noel the, for the first time about an hour and a half ago. But because um, in jazz, there's this uh, implicit understanding of role and instrument, right? We're, we're able to get up here on stage, kind of like a pickup game, we're able to play music. Um, that um, was pretty good, if I do say so myself. So empathy for each other, very, very important for teamwork and collaboration. Um, the second point I want to uh, talk about is um, structure. So contrary to popular belief, jazz mus musicians aren't just making things up as they go. It's not random. There's actually an underlying framework in a, uh, um, that's um, orienting us at all times. Uh, and it's primarily given by the form of the song. So the song we just played was called All Blues from Miles Davis's famous album, Kind of Blue. Have you heard of it? I see somebody nodding. Anybody else hear it? Okay. Um, and that's based on what's called a 12-bar blues. Um, and as the name suggests, it has 12 measures of a, set, a certain set of harmonies. So it was four bars of a G, then two bars of a C, four bars of a G, then D, E flat D, and then two bars of a G. So those 12 bars, we kept playing over and over again. The first two times we played that, we played the melody. And then each soloist, I think we all took two choruses, we all we had twice approximately, it could have been more or less, um, but we all played over that form. Right? So, that, so those 12 bars just keep repeating, and it's the rest of the band's job to kind of keep that going, but that's also how we know where everybody is. Right? So there's a very, very clear sense of orientation. But if you think about it, it's very high, it's highly iterative. Right? Jazz music is highly iterative, it's essentially human variations. It's kind of like a sprint, if you think about it, if you guys know Agile. It's kind of like a sprint where we agree on the structure and we just keep running through that and keep trying each sprint, trying to get it right or trying to reach, reach something new as, as, we, as we go along through that form. So um, there are no mistakes in jazz, just missed opportunities. Uh, empathy for each other. Um, but also structure um, are two things that contribute to that. Yeah, and so you take those qualities, you take empathy for the, for the different uh, roles, right? We've got different disciplines up on stage, everyone's contributing to the whole, and you build this structure around it that we can all go through repetitively and build off of and use, and, uh, and you start to introduce this next quality of transparency. There's uh, a, a, an immense amount of transparency on the stage because first of all, we're a small team, we're a small group of folks playing music. There's no one to hide behind. And so there's, uh, wh whatever one of us puts out here, the others have to listen to and react 
to. And so the, that, that transparency, it's, it's a bit un uncomfortable at times, and it's a bit raw because you don't know how your colleagues are going to react to that. Uh, but the nice thing is that they provide us with immediate feedback. So as Jim said, that we, we're listening with big ears, and someone puts something out there, and, and we can decide what to do with it, um, but there's no ignoring it. That there's a level, and, and, and the, the conversation has to take place about whether or not we take that and go with it, or we reject it, or we modify it in some way. And, and that way we include each person's contribution in, in the most effective way in the end result. In, in, in your case, it's the work product. In that case, it was the song. Uh, the, the fourth quality that we want to uh, show you up here is, is the idea that we're working within constraints. Jim talked about the structure. The structure of the song is one constraint that we work in. We work in this, on this form, it's 12 bar blues. Um, but what's interesting is that in order to be more collaborative and more creative, we continue to put constraints on ourselves. And, and at first, they, again, they, they feel uncomfortable at first, but ultimately they drive creativity. So think about the constraints of the key. We're playing in a particular key, we're playing in a particular time signature, there's a tempo. And, and what's more interesting is that in this case, we've maintained Miles Davis's original vision for the tune. So we're taking, we're taking a vision for that structure, and we're using that vision as guardrails for what we do up here. And you have to have vision in whatever project you're undertaking. There has to be some constraints that says this is within scope and this is outside of scope. Uh, and initially those constraints limit our choices, but really the, ultimately what they end up doing is fueling creativity. And so as you build these constraints around yourselves, that's where the real uh, creativity comes to play. And, and the last thing that I think is really key, and it's one of the things that I think software teams really struggle to deal with, and it's one of the things that the jazz players really excel at, is embracing uncertainty. The, 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 you know, we have the structure, we've got these constraints, but the reality is we had no idea what that song was going to sound like when we played it. Right? There was a melody, there was a form, but the solos were, were, were improvised, the changes were, uh, you know, it, it was, there was a lot of communication, but none of us really knew how exactly, where, where it was going to end up. And uh, it's that collective embrace of uncertainty that allows us to explore new possibilities. Instead of, uh, instead of having every single note written out on the page where we knew exactly where we'd end up, we have, a, we have that framework that we're building off of. And then we start to, to experiment and figure out what works well and what doesn't work well, and we iterate and we move, uh, we move that forward. And it's, it's, that, uh, it's that level of uncertainty that allows us, it's, it's, that, sorry, it's that, that embrace of uncertainty that allows us to improvise. Right? And improvisation is essentially taking a guess. It's saying, I think this is really going to work. And you throw it out there, and through those transparency and that immediate feedback and the empathy and the structure, you get a sense of whether or not that comes back to you. It did a good way or a bad way, and you try it again the next time you go through uh, what you call the sprint. So those are the five qualities that we're talking about. Empathy, so no mistakes, right? There's no mistakes up here. Um, and and we, we, uh, we exude that through empathy and uh, sticking to a structure by having a small, transparent team that knows what everybody else is doing by uh, putting constraints on ourselves, right? It's, again, to Jim's point, we're not just up here playing whatever we want. There are, there are certain constraints, and then ultimately, we're comfortable with a certain level of uncertainty not knowing where we're going to end up. So we're gonna play one more song for you, and uh, this song is called Moaned by Bonnie Timmons. And as we go through uh, the song, the melody, and the subsequent form, listen for those collaborative team attributes, right? No mistakes, there's, there's a clear structure to the song, um, transparency, and a level of uncertainty that makes it exciting, right? We don't know where it's going to end up, and that's kind of what makes playing this kind of music fun. Okay, so check it out, and then we'll talk about uh, these ideas a bit more.
one last time, uh, really huge thanks to Ryan and all for being on stage and making this sound really good. So thanks. To but I mean, the, the things. So, so to kind of continue the conversation, we talked about um, we talked about these these qualities of, of, of empathy, structure, um, transparency, constraints, and embracing uncertainty. I'd love to hear from you guys. Kind of bringing this back. So so this was fun. Bringing it back to uh, the world that we live in of, of, of designing uh, products and services and widgets and so forth. Um.